Welcome back to the Spa Business Mastery Podcast. And today is one of those days again where we get to talk about spa marketing with Delia. Delia is my director of marketing for Virtual Spa Business Management. That is our sister company of Kirsten Foss Coaching. Uh, and that is our, um, our agency uh, side of the business where we do all kind of more done for you services for the spa industry. So welcome back, Delia. I'm glad to have you yeah. on here. Again, I'm chatting about marketing, all things marketing. I know that your whole, all of your days. My whole world is filled with marketing. Marketing, marketing, spot marketing, spot marketing, spot marketing. Okay, so today's topic is what's the secret to getting more ideal clients into my spa business? So I feel like this, like a lot of spa owners assume that there's this kind of magic bullet or something that they don't know about that generates consistent flow of new clients in your business. When you say that, that's like, they're all on this elusive hunt. Yes. Or I, I, I was there. <laughs> I was looking for the elusive hunt. There's gotta yeah. be one thing. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, what we wanted to bring to your attention too, is that it's not, it's not any one thing but there are some things that are much stronger than others in terms of new client acquisition. That's the fancy digital marketing term for, you know, getting new uh, bookings into your business. So um, this fall, we've actually been talking a lot about lead magnets or they've been called opt-ins before for the spa industry because it's not really uh, done a lot in the spa industry having these lead magnets. And yet, it's one of those places where we feel like spas are, you know, when you don't know and you don't know, <laughs> you don't even know the question to ask if you don't even know, how, you know, kind of the what, what to ask. So we feel that like we wanted to bring attention to this lead magnet concept again for you as a new client acquisition uh, tactic. But we want to explain the system to you and why it works. So Let's start off with the fact, let's start off with reviewing just quickly, Delia, you know, mm -hmm. what is a lead ma magnet? How, how can a spa owner identify a lead magnet? Right. So a lead magnet is, like you said, part of your, uh, it's part of your client attraction system. So, I mean, we really like the systems over here. <laughs> and so everything, like, like Kirsten just said that, you know, some things are actually going to work to your advantage better than others, but they all work as a system together. And so because we've been talking about um, lead magnets and opt-ins, and we've been talking a lot about our uh, launching clients that we've been working with, um, the lead magnet, and you've all seen them, and if, even if you have them, you know, this is a great opportunity to tweak your lead magnet that you have. But really, as part of your client attraction system, it's a way for people to opt into your email list in exchange for a free gift, added value, um, and they would provide their name and email address in and get on your mailing list. So that is the purpose of a lead magnet to get more of those ideal clients, potential clients who are interested in your services and what you offer so that you can start communicating with them on a regular basis. So I think, you know, I know there's a lot of friction with spa owners and email marketing because this lead magnet is part of uh, your, your email marketing system, as well as your client attraction system. So email marketing is for, you know, nurturing. So those new people that are on that have opted in your lead magnet and got the little freebie or the value add. And this would look like, um, you know, maybe you've decided that you want to do a discount on kind of your entry level facial. And this is how you want to funnel people into your business kind of starting at this point in this facial. So, you know, they put their name and email address in and they get a email back with a coupon that gives them you know, a per percentage or a dollar value off of their first facial, but, but email marketing. So then they're on your email list and then you continue on with your general normal email marketing, but email marketing is also for your existing clients to nurture those, that group as well. So I can't think of a better marketing platform that can, that does this. Do you deal yet? Like maybe blogging, but you know, social media, yes, but it, it's hit and oh. miss whether people actually see your posts. It's hit and miss whether people actually see your posts. Uh, it depends, you know, where are you posting? So, you know, if you have a older clientele and you're posting on Instagram, likeliness, they're not going to be there. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is just a, I mean, it's a, it's a, 
<laughs> it's nothing new. It's been around for a long time. It's going to stay because it is the best way. I mean, we just had a, what, two days, um, a couple weeks ago where Instagram and Facebook were, were down. Yeah. And so people can't communicate with their clients, but, um, or potential clients. And this is a great way to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and consistently, and knowing that, um, you already have people who are interested in your products and your brand on that list. And so whether they purchased from you or not, um, or whether they're considering it, you still have them there. So you still have that means of communication on a regular basis. Yeah. That's so important because, you know, like, the, the thing with social media, yes, it can disappear in an instant, like we saw a couple of weeks ago. Um, but the other piece is that, um, you know, email marketing has consistently given, like there's data in, in terms of like consistent ROI, return on investment. So the time and money that you've spent putting together your email marketing on a consistent basis will net you more sales and bookings than a social media post. And it's much, much cheaper than doing Facebook and Instagram ads. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Definitely. So what we want to be really clear about is that your lead magnet is part of a system. So it goes that, you know, the, the consumer opts into your giveaway, whatever freebie value add, whatever it is, they're now on your email list. Usually there's a little sequence in there that, you know, nurtures them. Hello, welcome. This is who we are and what we're about. And then they kind of shift over into the main list where the rest of your existing clients are. And you continue on with your regular monthly or twice monthly, which we hope you're doing uh, email marketing uh, in order to generate, you know, bookings and, and sales. Yeah. And the other piece to it is that, um, and we may have said this already, but it, it gives you better quality. Like it gives you better qualified leads. So you don't just have anybody and anybody on it. You actually have people on there who are already interested. And so it makes your, it gives you a really, really, really strong email list. Mm -hmm. And a strong email list means that they are much more likely to buy from you or book an appointment than, than another way. All right. So there's, there's other ways to, as far as lead magnets, um, in terms of like lead magnet, like lead magnet strategy. So we've got, you can have a seasonal lead magnet and that would be something like if you are, uh, if you've got a service that you want more people booking uh, or just bringing attention to. Uh, so say you've started an acne program or an acne niche, then mm-hmm. I would create a lead magnet for, um, you know, maybe a consult, an acne consultation and their first facial or whatever it is, but it can be just something that is seasonal. So maybe you have it running for a couple of months and then you shift it over into another lead magnet. So that's seasonal. Then we have time sensitive. Um, so things like, um, you know, like a, an online event, a free online event would be a time sensitive lead magnet. So it's free for them to come to the event, but there is, there's a time crunch on it. And then there is the evergreen lead magnet and the evergreen lead magnet just kind of stays static where it is. Um, you you know, you definitely want to change it up, you know, every, you know, whatever your business strategy is, it might need to change, but um, you can have a lead magnet that's just static and stays up there for however long you want until you feel like it's just not working for you anymore. So those are the three different kinds of lead magnets that you can have. I would suggest going with the evergreen to start Um, working with seasonal and time sensitive lead magnets are just a little bit more higher level in terms of marketing and strategy. Um, and if you're really new to this, don't overcomplicate this and make it simple. (laughs) We all love to (laughs) overcomplicate. Just straightforward, simple, you know, one messaging and that's it, not multiple offers. So, you know, if you're one, you know, this is the other piece as far as like, what's the secret to getting more ideal clients into your spa business. Mm -hmm. This is this piece. If you're wondering how to attract these people out there, you know, wherever they are into your business, um, this lead magnet is all about building that brand awareness because you you are giving them something, they're giving you their name and email list. That's, that's personal information. People don't give that out very freely. So, you know, there's this kind of little relationship happening. Um, so they're, they're not going to give you anything personal unless they actually feel like you are, a, you have some sort of value. So this is how you build a really strong brand, brand awareness, attracting those ideal clients into your business that maybe are, they're not quite ready to buy, but they're sitting on your list and they're, they're open to what you have to say on your emails. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And so once, um, you know, you've got, you've got them on your email and 
like Kirsten said, you're, you'll you know, want to do a little bit of a welcome series and then they'll go on to your main list. And so even if they haven't purchased from you at that point and they're still, on your, they're still interested, they haven't opted out, um, what you'd want to do just with your regular email marketing is offer a nice blend of um, educational content. So those would be things like tips, um, you know, if you've got an events, any new training, any new services, if you've got an ingredient highlight that you want to focus on or a new blog post that's going out. And so make it a nice blend of uh, more educational type content and, um, you know, a little bit of promotion as well. So that's why we talk about two emails per month, because we like to split it up. We don't want to constantly be um, promoting, promoting promotions, promotions, because, you know, they're not going to be interested. So if you are building up that uh, opt-in and you've got people on your regular email list and they still haven't purchased from you, that educational content is really going to solidify that relationship and position you uh, more as that expert and become more trusted to the person who has opted in. And at that point, they start kind of converting into um, purchases. Yeah. Uh, if, yeah. 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 So, yeah. So, you know, it's kind of a lot of in our industry, we've often waited until a, a consumer comes into our business and into the treatment room before we share that education and knowledge with them. But mm -hmm. our education and knowledge and experience and all that stuff, we need to be more, more uh, visible with that and more public with that, because that's how you build, like, how else are they going to know that you know what you're talking about, right? Well, and how else are they going to know what else you offer, um, yeah. right? Because yeah. a lot of times, I mean, you can um, think about it, but how often are we talking to our clients and we forget to talk to them <laughs> about what we do? <laughs> We're talking to them about the weekend. So, you know, I, I've run into that before. I think I've talked about it before where when I was working in the spa, I had you know, a really, really, really strong clientele of gel nail clients. And that is not what I, I loved it. And I love my clients. It's not what I wanted to be doing. And so one of my clients ended up booking a sugaring appointment with one of the other estheticians, not realizing that I also, uh, <laughs> that you also service, do this <laughs> service as well. So that that's what I mean. So if, if you, I mean, you should be having in small conversations, but if that's, you know, something's missed or clients aren't picking up on that, you have the extra layer of communication with your clients. For sure. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Cause that's so yeah. important. All right. Now, once your lead magnet is set up, <laughs> and that would be deciding what the actual offer is. That would be um, setting it up on your website, like having a landing page. And a landing page, um, as far as term digital marketing term terminology, a landing page is a web page on your website that is does not show up on the nav bar, but it's a, a you know basically it's like a hidden page that right. um, you know you put your your visual, your, you know, what your offer is, your name, the name and email um, to, be, to be able to opt in. So you're usually going to use something like uh, MailChimp or uh, what have we got? Uh, Drip, um, Squarespace, Squarespace. Uh, we're working in Clavio right now with the client, uh, Constant okay. Contact. So, you know, those are some of the things you want to think about. But once the lead magnet is set up, it is not, let me repeat again. <laughs> It is not a set it and forget it kind of marketing tactic, okay? That is only the first phase. And once that's done, it's it, it's a kind of a bit of a job. Um, but once it's done, you do have a responsibility now to make sure those link that link gets out there <laughs> so people can actually <laughs> opt in. If you just stick it on your website, on your homepage, um, and kind of wait passively for traffic to come to it. You know, again, that's part of that passive marketing. Mm -hmm. You, you hope for the best. You put it out and hope for the best. Yeah, you hope for the best, but it's, you know, it's, it's also called spaghetti marketing where you like throw it at the wall and see what works. <laughs> so we don't want to do any spaghetti marketing here. So we have 15 places that you can post or put your lead magnet URL for the landing page in. So that you can consistently get, you know, capture that traffic in those places and drive them into that landing page to get them to opt in and get onto your email list. All right. So the first place, um, you know, for us, it feels it's obvious is social media. And we're going to start with Facebook. Yeah. And I would suggest uh, posting your lead magnet URL as a post once mm -hmm. a week, mm -hmm. but change up the caption. 
Okay. Don't just put the URL and hit post and expect people to be like trying to figure out why they need, why they want this, tell them why they want it. Okay. And come at it from different angles for different, um, for different weeks. Yeah. And talk about how it will solve their problems. Yes. And that's the whole thing about a lead magnet. It needs to solve a problem that your consumer is actively trying to solve. It's kind of, I, when I, when I look at a lead magnet, um, you know, we often in the, in the kind of the coaching industry, we're we do want, we're giving really good, valuable information, but we're not giving away the farm. We're just giving that little first nugget to prove that we know what we're talking about, to give a little offer, um, and to kind of create that, you know, like, and trust factor. Mm -hmm. The second one, uh, part of this, so you're going to post to Facebook, um, weekly. The second part of this is you can take one of those posts and pin it to the top of your Facebook page. Okay. This is for a business page. You can't do this on personal pages. You want to, um, and I'll cover the next one here, Delia, number three, because sure. it all has to do with Facebook. Okay. Um, so the third thing for Facebook is to create a Facebook cover image for your Facebook page. And you want to, um, there, you're going to have a place to put the caption and the link, but in Facebook, you also have a, uh, like a, it's like a shop now button just below your featured image. When you, if, if you go in there and check it out, um, that was where I'd go in and click and edit and put in my lead magnet right there. Okay. Um, and then there's a fourth one for Facebook or four things for Facebook, um, is to add it to your business, um, profile, like, you know, where you have, you can go in and put your website. Um, you can put your link, uh, your lead magnet link in there. Yeah. And your personal one. You've got a personal URL too there. All right. Yeah. You can do awesome. the next one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go. We'll still talk a little bit about social media, um, but with Facebook and Instagram. So anytime you get uh, a new DM coming in, a new follower, um, you can have a preset script already that says, you know, hey, thanks for the follow. Um, you can talk a little bit about what type of um, content you put out, um, the focus of your educational um, components of your of your posts and then you can say offer them uh, with the link offer them to check out your new client opt-in yeah. and they that will take them directly to the landing page um, the other option uh, for Instagram as well is put it into the link in bio so um, everybody talks about you know click the link in bio if you've got a link tree or any other type of um, uh, service that you use for link and bio or you can directly if you're really trying to drive that traffic to your landing page for your opt-in then you can just put the direct link or you can choose um, whichever platform you use for link and bio and, and add it to that but I would also make the part of the caption part of the bio um, to you know click the links for your new for your free opt-in yeah yeah, yeah. Um, the next one um, goes into the email. Um, so email marketing. So you can add it to your email signature. Um, so below your signature, you could put a uh, receive a free and then whatever your offer your offer is and link it to your landing page. Um, and then in your email marketing, um, you know you've already got your um, customers who are already engaged with you, who are already purchasing from you, you could send out a um, ask in your next email, um, just asking your email list to spread the word, um, you know, if they want to inspire others who have also, um, you know, who they want to have experienced the same things that they have ex been experiencing, then they can forward that on to them. And I think it's a nice little, you know, especially if you're doing a new client opt-in, which is probably the most popular um, opt-in for spas to do, um, you know, that, and that would be giving a discount counter a value add for your very first service. There's also a limited, um, there's a expiry on that in terms of from the date of download. Yeah. Um, but, you know, as far as, you know, asking your email list to spread the word, um, it, you want to come across not like, hey, can you spread the word yeah. for me? I need more clients <laughs> like that. You yeah. want to frame it up in a little bit different way as far as, hey, do you have, do you know somebody that um, would like to try next spa, uh, we have a free gift for them if you'd like to share it with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so website. Now we're onto your website and there's a couple of uh, little nuggets here of what you can do for your lead magnet. So the first one, you could create a specific graphic for your featured image and that your featured image is kind of like that first big image um, above the scroll that, you know, kind of gets the most attention. Um, you definitely want to create a pop-up 
Now with the pop-up, I know some people are like, I hate pop-ups. Okay. Everybody hates pop-ups, but pop-ups <laughs> are annoying are annoying for a reason. A lot of times people have got their pop-ups on like seconds after I get to their website. And that's annoying. Like, I don't even know who you are yet. And you're trying to already get my e name and email list. So you can delay the timing on a pop-up. That's a tech that's available, very easily available. Um, and so you can even decide to, so whether it's like 10 seconds or 15 seconds, so it gives them time to move around the site and then it pops up or do an exit pop-up. So when they click X out of it, it pops up right then and there. But, you know, just because pop-ups, you know, I know there's some other stuff going on in terms of pop-ups, but they still work out really well. And, and it's still a really valid tactic to use until further notice. Um, third thing for your website is your blog, including your, if you're blogging, include your opt-in in the blog. Um, if any of you guys follow Amy Porterfeld, she does this magically. Mm -hmm. Amy Porterfeld is... Um, a digital marketing expert. She really specializes in email marketing and course creation. But if you go into her podcast or her, her blogs or show notes, um, she actually has different opt-ins, lead magnets for different types of content. I mean, she's like way pro at this, but it, if you want to go to her site, you can, you know, get that idea in terms of, you know, where that opt-in would go in, into a blog. Um, and then on your website as well. So if you have your featured image at the top, you could also or have a like a, a, a block somewhere on your homepage. That is your lead magnet block. So that's another spot there. Awesome. I'll let you carry on with with. OK, well, I think you just talked about Amy um, Porterfield. So you talked about how she has it in her uh, podcast. So if you're a guest uh, on a podcast or you have a podcast, then include that in a uh, link in your bio. No, 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 no. Hold on, uh, Delia. So that is more like if you want to include it. So when you get asked to go be on a podcast, um, they'll ask you for your bio because they read it out and they'll also put your bio on their blog and their show notes, but they also want, um, they'll give that link in their show notes so that, you know, when vis visitors or listeners go to their page, they, they've got that in there. Just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, thank you. Um, and then uh, networking events. So, you know, life is getting, getting back to in-person networking, or even if you're doing virtual networking events, um, include your lead magnet on your business card so that um, people can go in and click it. <laughs> and, this, um, and this is for like, also like if you, um, so yes, business networking events, but this is also like, if you guys are, you know, I know some spas do community events like fun runs or um, markets or, um, you know, maybe you have a stand at the golf course on one of the, one of the, the areas. This can be like, whether it's on a business card or a, a, like a, you know, any kind of your marketing material, you can, you want to put that link on there as well. Absolutely. Um, and then we've got uh, paid ads. So you can try some paid ads for your lead magnets. You can experiment with um, Facebook and, and Google um, because those will help to drive traffic to your landing page and get them on your uh on your lead generation. Well, yeah. And those paid ads tend to have a little bit better targeting than just your, your mm -hmm. own social. So you can, you can use your lead magnet more strategically, um, with paid ads, but it's definitely, it's definitely more of an investment for sure. It's more of an investment. Um, and you can play around with it. Um, but it is a, is it, it's another great way to be able to position your lead magnet. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So that was, those were 15. 15. 15 places where a spa can um, share their lead magnet. Now, you know, quite frankly, like when Delia and I were making this list up, um, mm -hmm. you know, there's not, I don't actually think I've seen a list specifically for spas anywhere. No. Cause when you're looking at, you know, when you look at, um, when you're looking up places on Google, like where, where do I put my lead magnet? A lot of it is going to be very much geared to, uh, online course creators and coaches, you know, so like, you're not going to have it in an e-course cause you're a spa professional. You don't typically create a course. Um, so this, these 15, this list of 15 lead magnets, make sure you earmark this. So yeah, that, I them for you. <laughs> that? 
We've handpicked them for you. Literally handpicked these for you so that it's a no brainer once you have your lead magnet set up. So to wrap things up, if you need more brand awareness to your business and you, you know, brand awareness is part of that funnel, you know, it starts at the top. We need lots of people at the top of the funnel and a few will filter, a few more will filter down for bookings and a few more will filter down all that kind of stuff. So if you need more brand awareness, meaning you need more ideal clients, then cons- please consider, um, putting together a lead magnet as your next digital marketing project to do. Um, it's, you know, it's really about a perspective shift for spa owners. I know that they kind of roll their eyes when I talk about email marketing. They're like, oh my God, more work. But you guys keep coming to us asking, I yes. need more ideal clients. I need more ideal clients. This, these are the systems that we talk about uh, on the Spa Business Mastery podcast that work in order to, you know, attract more clients into your business and actually, you know, have them booking and retaining them. And, you know, as we mentioned at the beginning, it's not one thing that makes it work. So I know we get a lot of like, we need more clients, we need more clients and everybody's looking for that magic bullet. But, you know, the answer is literally in front of you. (laughs) So the answer is strategic thinking and strategic actions. Mm -hmm. And that's the magic bullet consistent with them and, and can being consistent with them. So we totally get that being a spa owner is totally overwhelming and it can feel like, how do I do all the things? Well, you can't do all the things. Sometimes you need to farm projects out. Sometimes you need um, support to get these things done. So please don't think that there's something wrong with you. If you can't get this all done and, and serve clients as well, it's, it's an impossibility which is why Delia and I, you know, and our team work with digital marketing done for you services, because we, it it was all born out of my coaching clients being the bottleneck consistently in the coaching program when it came to marketing, like they just had too many things on their plate. So we're here. If you want to, um, if you want to lead magnet for your business and you actually don't want to even be bothered with putting it together or learning all the things of how to put it together. This is definitely a service that we offer spa clients. So reach out and connect with us if, um, if you just want to explore what that looks like. Uh, but it's definitely one of those consistent digital marketing uh, pieces to keep people coming into your spa business. Absolutely. Awesome. Great. Okay. I think that's all. That's us for the Spa Business Mastery podcast for this week. We're really glad you joined us. Delia is with uh, is with me once a month to talk about spa marketing. And uh, thanks for taking time out of your busy day. I know you are so up to your eyeballs in work right now. <laughs> I might call you for some help. <laughs> <laughs> Will do. All right. Okay, Bye, everyone. Bye.